All right, guys, I want to start out by saying that this post will be a little bit of a trigger for some people, and I just want to make sure that uh, if you are um, uh, challenged with uh, talk about body image or anything like that, please um, be aware that that's what the content of this video will be. So I think it's important to talk about this because I've seen a lot of posts coming out about it, and I think that the discussion uh, is, is something that needs to be nuanced and should often be approached by those who have experienced it themselves. So those who have um, struggled with uh, others who have put them down for their appearance or the way that they look, um, or even their body composition. And I wanna tell my story and give you guys some background on why um, or what I have experienced. Uh, and then maybe we can find some solutions together in the comments or in further discussion. So when I was uh, 12 years old, 12, 13, I was a late bloomer as far as the, the physical development of my body. I was, I was very thin. Um, I was not uh, developed. My voice didn't drop uh, quickly. I didn't have a lot of hair on my body. And the boys in my class started to change. They started to develop as, as happens in puberty. Um, and as a result, I was, I, because I had a high voice and because I was still, you know, as, as a young boy, probably looking more feminine than masculine, I had very arched feet and very, very hyperextended knees. Um, I was made fun of for, for, you know, looking like a girl and being, being a sissy and not being strong enough. And I, I was often bullied as well. And uh, this psychologically put me in a place where I often felt like I wasn't strong enough. Uh, and, and that followed me because I didn't have large muscles. I was not bulky. I was not, you know, a huge uh, muscular guy at a very young age. Uh, I, was, I was always looked at as, oh, he's not strong enough to do this. He's not strong enough to do this. He doesn't have the power or the strength. And so I, I started to kind of search for this power and strength that I just naturally was not building at that age. And I would do hundreds of push-ups before class. I would do all kinds of strength exercises and still the size of my body wouldn't come. There's a reason for that, and I'll, I'll get into that as we go. Uh, and that, that stayed with me. So even though I developed a good amount of strength, I never really developed large bulky muscles. It was not in my body to develop that way. And as I went into my professional life, I was often overlooked as uh, being too thin or being not strong enough, or you know, you don't look masculine enough because you don't have the Adonis, you know, typical muscular biceps and large broad shoulders. I remember being in a costume fitting where they actually changed the costume because um, it didn't give me a nice V shape. It actually made my legs look larger and my shoulders look more narrow. And I remember the director of the company saying to me, oh, you just don't look like a, like a man in this costume, so we have to change the shape. Um, Shortly after that, I was on stage uh, after, after a, a dress rehearsal and the, um, the ballet master who was there setting the piece comes up to me and says, you're too tall, you're too white, you look bored, you're just not right for this piece, I can't believe we put you in this. Um, yeah, these are just a couple of examples. I remember arriving in San Francisco Ballet and the very first class I took, uh, the ballet master came up to me and said, Oh, we thought you would be uh, stronger than, than you are, so uh, we're gonna have to bulk you up. And so they proceeded to put me with dancers that I was not actually strong enough to handle, um, instead of putting me with, with dancers that I probably could have, uh, could have lifted or could have partnered very effectively, almost like a hazing to make me feel bad about the fact that I maybe was not strong enough at that point to lift these girls. Now, I'm not saying that that's the fault of the girl. That's the fault of the directorship for trying to make me feel bad for my body. Uh, and this, you know, this then continued. And I went so far as to, at the end of that season, when they were still telling me I wasn't strong enough and, st and bulky enough, that I went uh, home with my uh, girlfriend, now wife at the time, to Australia. And I ate as much food as I possibly could. And I went to the gym all the time, like the whole time I was there. And I ended up putting on 10 kilos. Now there was a downside to that because I came back from that trip and I, I, you know, I was starting to jump and my body actually didn't have the strength at that point, even though it had the bulk to handle that weight. And I ended up causing more knee problems than I had ever had. So 
my, my joints didn't like having that extra bulk on. So I was actually more able to dance properly at the lighter body weight for my body, body composition. Now, I'm not saying this is for everybody, okay? This is the important part in this the, as we get more nuanced into this discussion. I'm just telling my experiences. Um, and then, then I came to Australia after, after leaving San Francisco Ballet. And it was the opposite discussion. It was all, you know, now you're a little bit too bulky. Now we want you, you know, more, more lean and slim. Uh, I remember a pianist coming up to me in Vienna and saying, oh, you look good now that you've lost that weight, right? Like this is something that I think, you know, even though the majority of the discussion happens in relationship to women and eating disorders uh, and the ladies being too, too light or, or, you know, or too heavy and then having to lose weight and, and then being told that they're, they're too sick or then getting injured, the discussion happens on the opposite side of the table for men as well. Um, obviously not for all men, but I think this is something that a lot of men do experience at some point where they either feel like they have to have a certain muscular build or they have to have a certain amount of power in their dancing. And it's often a discussion that is had with somebody um, and even not a, not a, like a face to face sit down, Hey, we need to get you stronger or healthier, but oh, you're just not looking right. And so that becomes something when you're looking at yourself in the mirror every day as a dancer and staring at yourself and staring yourself down. We are our own worst critics because we are basically in tights and a leotard, or tights and a shirt or leotard all day long, staring ourselves down with those words of our, of our, our mentors, our, our, uh, the people that we look up to, the people that, that sign our paychecks, basically, you know, demoralizing us and putting us in a position where we feel terrible about who we are. So what is the solution to this, guys? I think we need to look at it from a perspective of health of the individual. And I think that that is what the key fundamental discussion needs to be here. Is the individual healthy, first and foremost? Are they eating what they need to be eating for their body? Are they exercising the way that they need to be exercising for uh, injury uh, prevention, uh, for strength in their dancing? Are they able to get through the rehearsals and the classes that are required of them without creating more injuries, right? Because if you are not eating enough food, if you are not able to train your body in a cross-training strength method to make, maintain the health of your joints, uh, and you're being pushed into you know, potentially 60 hour weeks of rehearsals, uh, where oftentimes you're sitting or not even doing anything, um, but you just have to be there because for whatever reason they want you in the room. I think that there's a, there's an overarching issue of we're pushing dancers to do things that are not in their best health interest. And then when they get injured or they get sick or they fall apart, we're blaming them for the poor organization or the, the lack of training or the lack of education around nutrition. So I think as a, as a overarching theme, we need to change the approach from you don't look right, you're not strong enough, you don't do this, you don't do that, to how can we support you as an, as an artist to make sure that you're healthy, strong, well-nourished, and able to give your best because if you're not strong enough, if you're not feeding yourself, if you're not taking care of your body, you are not going to be able to give your best. You are not going to be able to dig deep into your soul and emote the way that you possibly can. And you're not going to be able to give the artistic expression that you know you possibly can because you are basically killing yourself to try and achieve someone else's ridiculous standards. So if there's one thing that I can leave you guys with today, it's to find those people that support you, that believe in you, that see the best in you, that bring out the best in you through the support of your body health, your nutrition, your mental health, and then help you to become the best artist that you can be. Let's continue this discussion, guys. Let's make this the future of dance, not about achieving some standard that's ridiculous, but about making sure that the dancers and the artists that we are creating are healthy, strong, and the best that they can be.